Hi, this is Marcy Harris with Popbox, and I am very happy to be back with Charlie Mitchell from Inside Washington Publishers, uh, who is uh, going to help us figure out what Congress did before it got out of town for Memorial Day. Charlie, they're right. gone, but what did they leave? Well, they left a lot of work to pick up when they get back. There was uh, there was a lot of activity in the last week, um, but one thing, one big thing that, that didn't get done is any action on the budget resolution. And we've been keeping an eye on this. Um, the House and Senate have each passed a version of the budget resolution for the coming year and setting out a five and 10 year plan. These things basically stake out each party's policy priorities for an extended period of time. And so there are vast differences between the House and the Senate budget resolution. The, the interesting thing politically here is that the Senate has largely not passed a budget resolution over the last few years because it, it's very difficult to pull their whole caucus together. They didn't want to submit their members to very difficult votes on controversial issues being fully aware that the budget resolution was never going to be enacted. So they said, why go through the exercise? Republicans, on the other hand, said, well, it's the law, it's the Budget Act, and you have to do it, and, and hammered them for a number of years over this. So this year, the Senate Democrats have, have passed a budget resolution. Um, the House has passed one. The next step would be a House-Senate conference on this. But so far, the, the House Republicans have refused to go to conference because they say there's no possibility of an agreement. They want to see some give, basically, from the Senate Democrats before they agree to go to conference. And the Democrats are saying, well, wait a minute. You've demanded that we go through what's called regular order for years. Here we are, and now you're refusing to go forward. So we'll have to see what happens with that. One of the things that the budget resolution is supposed to do is set the spending limits for the annual appropriations bills that fund most operations of government. Um, they, they don't have that. They, they don't have an agreed upon level between the House and Senate. So each side is kind of setting its, its numbers. There was um, some activity on that in the House and the Senate Appropriations Committee before they left. So this will be a thing to watch for when they get back. They'll start actually moving these individual appropriations bills that fund the federal agencies. Um, and we're, we're seeing some of the impact of this funding going on right now thanks to the sequester, which is the result of the Budget Control Act from a couple of years ago. And that set these automatic cuts that came into effect at the beginning of this year, and people are saying that that's causing a, a drag on the economy. On the other hand, it's also having an appreciable effect on bringing down the deficit. But here in Washington, we saw one of the practical effects of this this the, this past Friday when they closed the IRS and they closed the U.S. EPA for a day because they basically had to furlough all of their workers to achieve the savings that sequestration demanded. So. This is something, it's an unintended consequence. It's something that nobody wanted and nobody said they wanted it, but um, we're, we're living with it and it's become the, the law of the land and, and policy. So we have these budget questions to deal with in the background and that kind of hangs over and haunts everything that Congress is doing. But they were busy on other fronts. Uh, the House this past week passed H.R. 1911, which is the Smarter Solutions for Students Act. And basically, it reforms the way student interest, student loan interest rates are applied. Right now, students pay a 3.4% interest rate on their student loans. Um, if the law isn't amended by July 1st, basically in this next congressional legislative period, that rate is going to double to 6.8%. So Republicans have worked up a new formula. They want this to be more market-based rather than the, than the government arbitrarily saying what the interest rate is. So they've set this, it's, it's a rather complex formula in which you take the, the treasury bond rate and you add 2.5% on top of that and that becomes the student loan rate. Um, they say it's more market-driven. They actually got a little bit of pushback from conservatives in the House Republican Conference who said, wait a minute, that's not market driven. That's a kind of a crazy complex formula, but it does interject a market element into it. Democrats are taking a much simpler ap approach to this whole thing. They're saying, let's extend by two years the current 
rate, the basically the um, the 3.4 percent rate, and that will probably be the position that Senate Democrats come out with, and they will um, push that position, and we'll see if they can get that across the Senate floor. But we're going to see action in the Senate. They're going to have to deal with it in June as well. So the bill to watch for on the Senate side is S707. It's sponsored by Senator Jack Reed from Rhode Island, and that basically says that the interest rates on student loans will stay the same for the next two years. And the key thing to watch for here is that Congress has to do something by July 1st or students' interest rates are going to double. And we saw, Marcy, as you remember last summer, they they only ended up extending it for one year, but we went through the same exercise last mm -hmm. summer, and it got right up to the deadline, and they finally passed a one-year band-aid to, to really kick the debate over. That That's the one thing that Congress has proven very adept at doing, is kind of bouncing things along down the road and buying the themselves one year another year. One-year extension, absolutely. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. And the House also took action on Keystone this week. That That's right. The Keystone XL pipeline, which is a proposed pipeline from Alberta, Canada, down to the Gulf states, where or the Gulf of Mexico, um, it would transport oil, tar sands oil, that's being developed in, in Canada, and bring it down to refineries in the Gulf. Um, the it, it has... It has a fair amount of bipartisan support. It's considered a jobs bill. It would create a lot of construction jobs building this pipeline. The numbers are in dispute. However, environmentalists are strongly opposed to this. Um, they say that the tar sands oil is very rich in carbon, and so it has a huge global warming impact. So they have been making this a, a, a huge issue and a line in the sand, if you will. Um, the bill that passed the House is H.R. 3, and we'll, we'll have to see if and when the Senate takes it up. Um, there has been an indication of Senate bipartisan Senate support for advancing the pipeline, but the administration has put out a veto threat against H.R. 3, and they are considering this through an administrative procedure, and the administration still needs to determine yay or nay on this pipeline, and they're saying to Congress, don't usurp our authority to make this decision without saying whether or not they are for or against the pipeline. The environmentalists believe the administration has to be against the pipeline since the president has made climate change a, a top priority, but by the same token, the administration has acknowledged the job implications, and um, they're still very wary of that, that stubbornly high unemployment rate. So, I don't know when we're going to get a decision from the administration, but it'll be interesting to see if supporters can gin up enough pressure in the Senate to get a vote, maybe as an amendment to something else. That would be the thing to look for. Very interesting. And speaking of the Senate, they've still got a very full plate sure. uh, over the next few weeks. Uh, Farm Bill? Farm Bill is on the floor right now. They, they walked away from that on Friday, and they'll return when they get back the first week in June. That's S-954. It contains almost a trillion dollars in, in agricultural spending. Um, this past week, the House Agriculture Committee also approved its bill. That's H.R. 1947. Uh, the, one of the key differences between these two bills is how much savings they get from, from food stamp programs, from food assistance programs in this country. Um, the Senate bill gets about four billion in savings over ten years, which, um, in the scheme of things, isn't a, a huge number. The House bill gets about twenty billion in savings and is considered very controversial. Um, the House bill gets the majority of its savings from food stamp cuts. Um, Frank Lucas is from Oklahoma, is the Republican chairman of the House Agriculture Committee, and he says that that's going to be the main point of dispute between the two chambers once they once each chamber has passed a farm bill. Well, and, and let's talk a little bit about the mechanics. The Senate passes its bill, the House passes its bill. Are we looking at a potential farm bill conference, or are they going to right. kind of have an informal back and forth and come to an agreement amongst themselves? That's yet to be determined, but there could be a conference on this. I, I think the expectation at, at this point is that there would be. 
once again, um, the, the farm bill was extended on a short-term basis because they couldn't work out these kind of differences last year. So we'll see if anything changes. Um, sometimes you, you, know, you technically have a conference, and there should be a conference between the House and Senate, but they know that they're not going to move off their own positions, and so they never actually get into a room, and there's no bargaining that's actually going on. So it's going to be interesting to see. I think that we'll have a House farm bill having passed that chamber by about the middle of June, and we'll have probably a Senate farm bill around the same time. And the, the key to that on the Senate side is that um, the, the Senate leadership wants to get the farm bill done and taken care of so that they can bring immigration reform to the floor. And that's S744, the, the so-called Gang of Eight bill. Um, it's a compromise. It got through committee, the Judiciary Committee, this past week. They thought actually that the markup where they consider amendments in committee was going to take a, a couple of weeks more, but they, they finished it off. Um, and now Senator Reid, the majority leader, is promising floor action in the next few weeks. Uh, the big question there will be, you know, can the gang of eight, the four Democrats and four Republicans, stay together on this thing and fend off, you know, so-called poison pill amendments and other amendments that might sink the measure and things that might make it unpassable in the House. On the House side, they have their own gang of eight of four Democrats and four Republicans who we thought were going to have a finished product this past week, they're still working on it a little bit. Um, they say they have an agreement in principle, but we haven't actually seen the, the language, so we don't have a bill number to point to. Um, we did hear a lot from the House Republican leadership, from Speaker John Boehner, who was quoted over the week saying, the House is not going to be stampeded into acting on the Senate immigration bill. We're going to have our own product, and, and it's going to go through the committee process, and Basically, they're saying they're going to take their time with it and, and figure out exactly the way that they want to do it. Um, so it, it's going to be an interesting summer on, on immigration reform as well. Well, and it seems like we always have these big issues that come to a head just before, you know, in July, and then they go away for August recess, and that's when the members really hear from the people back home right. uh, on, on the big issue of the summer, whether it was health reform or the, the, the budget, et cetera. So do you think this is going to be the summer of immigration discussions? I think this is going to carry out through the summer, and we may or may not have bills passed through both the House and Senate by the time they leave for the August recess. But I would say the odds look pretty good that we'll go into the fall without an agreement between the House and Senate, and that'll be the thing that they'll be kind of desperately trying to work out before they adjourn for the year. Very interesting, Charlie. It's always good to hear from someone who's been watching this for a very long time. We appreciate your expertise. Have Great. a good Memorial Day weekend. Thank you. You too, Marcy.